Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and coming up is Jimmy Carr in Concert. It's an old DVD of mine, and uh, yeah, it was a very short ideas meeting on the title of the DVD. We call it In Concert because it's me, Jimmy Carr, in concert, so it's called Jimmy Carr in Concert. I think the jokes still work. I look a bit different, but you know, I've had a lot of work done. I genuinely can't get over how nervous I am. It's my fourth DVD in the Bloomsbury Theatre. It's called In Concert. You're watching it. Good, right, let's go, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honour and a privilege to be here. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, well done, me. I went out earlier to get a cup of coffee. Someone came up to me and said, are you Jimmy Carr or do you just look like Jimmy Carr? I said, both. <laughs> you know when you go around to a friend's house for the first time and they say to you, did you find it OK? <laughs> what are you meant to say? <laughs> no, I'm still lost. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm posh. Who here thinks I'm posh? Well, compared to you, yes. <laughs> but I'm not as posh as people think. I actually went to one of the roughest colleges in Cambridge. <laughs> fame is weird. I'm at a very weird level of fame now where people come up to me and say hello to me in the street. Yeah, it's very flattering, it's lovely. But then they'll insult me when they're talking to me. They'll, they'll, they'll say things like, you're not as fat as you look on TV. <laughs> you mean not as fat? <laughs> well, this is my favourite. They go, uh, they go, you're actually quite funny. <laughs> like they're saying, imagine my surprise, you're not totally fucking shit. <laughs> So I'm flattered they've said hello, but then I'm angry they've insulted me. So I'm angry and flattered at the same time. Those are weird emotions to have at the same time. So I try and do the same thing back. I say, well, you're a super little cunt. <laughs> I keep on getting mistaken for Alan Carr. So what I've done is I've stopped sucking men off. <laughs> that was my hand symbol for no more cock. I don't quite know what that round of applause was for. <laughs> was that you thinking that's a very funny joke or homosexuality is just about willpower? <laughs> People often ask me, what were you like at school? So I tell them, I was a little black girl. <laughs> it's about half of you laughing, half of you thinking, was he? <laughs> you would never know. Wetting your bed is embarrassing as a child, but as an adult, <laughs> wetting a child's bed is mortifying. <laughs> It's almost impossible to explain that shit away. <laughs> well, it's early on in the evening. Let's try some easy jokes to start with, shall we? Good luck. <laughs> I was in the south of France. I saw a brownie on a school trip. She was holding up a book. It said on the front, rough guide. I thought, yeah, she's not a looker. <laughs> That's the easiest joke in the show. <laughs> if you don't get that, you might as well fuck off now, mate. 3% of Britons never leave a tip, and they're known as the weirdos that live at the tip. <laughs> I saw a headline, it said, Britain faces crisis. I thought, what, we're running out of faces? <laughs> when someone recommends a book to me and they say, it's a page turner, I always think, yeah, I know how books work. <laughs> I bought a home pregnancy kit. Turns out my house is pregnant. <laughs> We're thrilled. We're having a shed. <laughs> I got interviewed last week by a very nice young lady. She said, what's your house like? I said, I've got a semi. <laughs> Which would have been fine, but then I showed it to her. <laughs> and of course, by then, it wasn't a semi. If you ask ten randomly chosen women how often they wash their knickers, a surprising number answer, how did you get in here? <laughs> Treat them mean, keep them keen, that's what they say, isn't it? Treat them mean, keep them keen. But I think you've gone too far if you're using a Stanley knife. <laughs> of course, a lot of women stay with their men, even if their men hit them. A lot of women will stay with their husbands, even if their husbands beat them. I tell you what they need, a slap. <laughs> Where's your self-esteem? <laughs> Silly cow. She was tiny. <laughs> of course, the thing people never say about domestic violence, and it strikes me as being just so very obvious, but people never say this about domestic violence, is just how fucking stupid it is. I mean, you're hitting your wife. 
It's your wife. <laughs> you might as well key your own fucking car. <laughs> Think about it. You don't like her now, you're not gonna like her anymore with two black eyes and a bit of a face on, are you? <laughs> There are places in the country where that's just a joke. I did that joke in Preston. It was like marriage guidance. <laughs> it got a round of applause. Well, I thought it was a round of applause. It was actually people hitting their wives. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was scared of the dentist. He was a paedophile. <laughs> well, I suppose that begs the question, how many fillings did he give me? <laughs> I believe each and every child should be given a chance, and that's why, if they can guess the number I'm thinking of, I let them go. <laughs> Is anyone in from around the country? You're from London, where are you from? <laughs> where, where are you from, sir? Doncaster. You're from Doncaster, and you're down here just for the lights. <laughs> You'll be back and telling people, oh, I was inside. It was like a cave. <laughs> but it was like daytime at night. <laughs> Couldn't make a head and a tail. Mm. Candles. <laughs> candles? Yes, they're like candles. <laughs> well done, you. It's lovely to have you. Now, mark off back. <laughs> New Zealand. New Zealand? How's it going over there? Is it all right? It's not bad. You still having that problem with Saruman and his orc army? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Sorry, did you just go hello at the end? Where are you from, madam? Dartford. Dartford? Dartford. You sound like a man. <laughs> Where are you from, madam? Dartford. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's like a horrible racist joke from the 70s. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello to you. <laughs> what, sorry? I'm from Seven Oaks. You're from Seven Oaks, but you said hello. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't you. Why are you talking then? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Who said that? Not me. I'm from Seven Oaks. <laughs> What do you do, madam? I'm a student. You're a student, and what are you studying? Drama. Drama? <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, I always say the same thing. Whenever I meet a drama student, an aspiring actress or an actor, I always say the same thing to any aspiring actor or an actress I meet. I always say, I'll have a coffee, please. I was in Newcastle recently. I was in the back of a cab in Newcastle, and the cab driver said to me, there's no red light district in Newcastle. Because <laughs> that's how they talk. <laughs> if you're in Newcastle for the weekend, it's most disconcerting, because you find yourself thinking, well, is everyone trying to start a sing-song, and I just don't know the words? <laughs> there's no red light district in Newcastle. <laughs> I hadn't asked, incidentally. I hadn't got in the back of a cab in Newcastle and said, take me to the prostitutes, my good man. <laughs> No, just apropos of nothing, this bloke went to me, there's no red light street in Newcastle. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything, because he's quite a big, tough, Geordie bloke. But I did think to myself, I'll tell you why, no need. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to Newcastle? <laughs> Two Bacardi breezes, and the deal is done. <laughs> it's the kind of town where if you've got money enough for chips, guess what, great news, you're not going home on your own. <laughs> that was a nice little smile there. Just as if to say, I'll tell you what I like, chips and cock. <laughs> Good on you. You know in Big Brother, when they swear, they play in that bird song? I've got so used to that that now when Spring Watch is on, I think the Badgers are calling Bill Oddie a cunt. <laughs> I had a friend come round to my house the other day, distressed and distraught. He was nearly in tears, a grown man. He said, I've got a lump on my testicle. I said, that would be your other testicle. <laughs> I got stopped earlier by one of those charity muggers. <laughs> you know the ones in the high street with the clipboard and the optimism? <laughs> he stopped me and said, if you give five pounds a month, no children will get hurt. <laughs> it's like a fucking protection racket, isn't it? <laughs> 
speaking of charity, though, the largest charitable contribution in human history was made last year. An American man gave away $32 billion. He was some kind of Wall Street financier. Gave away $32 billion to the third world. What an incredible, selfless, wonderful thing to do. But spare a thought for his children. <laughs> How annoyed would you be? <laughs> You've done what, Dad? Ah, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> So you're telling me the only way I'm going to get my inheritance now is if I move to Africa and get AIDS? <laughs> Livid! <laughs> Have a guess, ladies and gentlemen, how much I give every year to animal charities. Have a guess. That's fucking optimistic. <laughs> Fuck all! <laughs> Fuck all is exactly right. <laughs> I realise some other people said nothing, but nothing is not the same as fuck all. <laughs> Giving nothing to an animal charity would be, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Fuck all is much more, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I give fuck all to animal charities. It's because there are charities out there for sick and dying children. I don't give anything to them either. <laughs> but it's the principle of the thing. Those are the charities I don't give to first. <laughs> you know why they raise all that cash to dig wells in Africa? So when they're finished, they can throw money in and wish for food. <laughs> I know you think that's offensive, but it's not when you compare it to this. <laughs> the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the fine work the Make-A-Wish Foundation do? Broadly speaking, they make dreams come true for the terminally ill. What could be more worthwhile? They're a great organisation. I thoroughly approve of what they do. My only problem with them is the name. I think they should be forced to change their name. From the Make-A-Wish Foundation to the No Make Another Wish, we can't do anything about that foundation. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you all see that heartbreaking story in the Mirror newspaper last year? Yeah. They ran a campaign... <laughs> Are you showing off to the other children? <laughs> Are you pretending you can read? <laughs> By heartbreaking story, do you mean the tits on page three? <laughs> what, sorry? Don't let that semi... Whack and fat I'm fine for fruit and veg, thank you. <laughs> I presume that's what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's nice that you're here, though. It's a night off for someone, isn't it? <laughs> now, now, I talked about the Make-A-Wish people. Did you all see this upsetting story in the Mirror last year? It was about a five-year-old boy that needed a new kidney, otherwise he was going to die. And the Mirror ran a six-week campaign about this, yeah? I'll tell you the good thing before I tell you the funny thing. That five-year-old boy is now six. He got the kidney and he made it, thanks in no small part to the Mirror newspaper. Well done, then. Yeah? But talk about heartbreaking. Talk about tugging the heartstrings. Last Christmas, they printed his Christmas list in the paper. And the kidney was on the list. Fourth. <laughs> Fourth! There were things he wanted more. <laughs> Number three was a Little Britain DVD. <laughs> I don't want to sound tight-fisted, but I'd have got him that. There you go, mate, you'll piss yourself. I'll get someone to explain what kidneys do after the show. I was at a party, I was chatting to a guy, he said, what does your girlfriend do? I said, anything but anal. <laughs> I'm joking. She loves it. I'm in a long-term relationship, but I'm not married. Is anyone else in that situation? <coughs> Quite a few, but you're timid about saying, because, uh, like me, you'll know, if you're in a long-term relationship but not married, everyone, friends, family, colleagues, acquaintances, everyone feels they can stir it up a bit. <laughs> as soon as anyone hears, they go, have you thought about... <laughs> have you two, have you thought about... <laughs> trying to start an argument between us. I think it's very rude. So whenever anyone says to me, have you thought about... <laughs> Go back. Go back. I always go, what, putting a third finger in? <laughs> I could give it a go. I'm not sure it's what the relationship is missing. Maybe try the shocker. <laughs> Two in the pink, one in the sting. That's how that works. 
Sorry, too much? <laughs> Two in the goo, one in the poo. There. <laughs> Nicer for everyone. <laughs> I don't know what conversation that prompted there. <laughs> I imagine that was you, madam, turning to him, thinking, I'm glad it's not just you. I had a woman come up to me after a show in Tunbridge Wells. She said, I found that shocker thing very uncomfortable. <laughs> now, I knew what she meant. <laughs> but I couldn't help myself. I said, lubricant. <laughs> I tried some Viagra recently. Has anyone else tried it? Yes. You have? Well, I admire your honesty there, sir. I tried it because you can now get over-the-counter Viagra. I thought, that sounds powerful. <laughs> Over the counter, you say? <laughs> like a fucking kosh. <laughs> did you read the instructions when you tried it, sir? Uh, I didn't. You didn't? I did. Can I take these kind of things seriously? Because it's a medication. Even though it's a fun medication, it's a medication nonetheless. I was reading on the instructions for Viagra. It says, keep away from children. <laughs> I thought, what kind of a man do they think I am? <laughs> that can't maintain an erection with a child. <laughs> I like the fact a child has applauded that very loudly. <laughs> See, now there's a child in a green T-shirt. You are a child, I'm saying, going, yes! <laughs> Finally, someone that can get hard with me. <laughs> you fucking maniac. How old are you, sir? Do you mind me asking? I'm 14. You're 14? Right, I can't talk to you any longer. It would be grooming. <laughs> and are you here with your mum? Mummy's little bender. Uh, <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Look at the man from the telly. Talk to me. <laughs> I'll be checking in with you in a bit. <laughs> well, that brings me very neatly onto the next bit of material. Who here's got kids? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of was that. <laughs> what? Sorry. Why, right, Jimmy? What? What? <laughs> what was that? You chipped in with something. Said, go on, Jimmy. You said go on, Jimmy. Yes. All right. Uh, ironically, slowing things down. <laughs> you often do that. Just stop people in the street and go on with you. On with your day. <laughs> I was just. I just stopped you to tell you to continue. <laughs> Now, I don't have kids, but I've got lots of friends that have got kids. They're five and six years of age. I'll go around to the house, I get introduced. They say, this is, this is Jimmy, he's a comedian. It's a bit like a clown. <laughs> I go, well, it fucking isn't. <laughs> and they'll say, shh, don't swear in front of the kids. <laughs> and then they'll say, would you like to hear a joke? And the little kid will go, yes. <laughs> and I'm expected to perform. So I say, when I was a kid, I was scared of the dentist. <laughs> You would not believe the upset. <laughs> what for paedophile? <laughs> Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> so what I've done, so I've got some jokes for kids, I've rewritten some classic children's jokes. You'll know the original, shout out if you do. What do you get if you cross a sheep with a kangaroo? <laughs> a wally jumper. I've gone for a genetic aberration that's an insult to both God and man. <laughs> Where does the policeman live? 999 Lesby Avenue. 999 Lesby Avenue, exactly right. I've gone for nowhere. He's been replaced by an undertrained and poorly equipped community support officer. <laughs> Not that I'm having a go at community support officers. They do valuable work. Without them, how would we know where the nearest cash point is? <laughs> There's one here. What, a cash point? <laughs> Thanks very much. Are you a community support officer? Hello. How are you? Are you all right? And where, where's your beat? Uh, East London. East London? You're a community support officer in East London? <laughs> You're having a fucking laugh. <laughs> Don't go out there without a gun. <laughs> good. Is it fun? Is it, I imagine it's quite a good job, is it? It's not bad. It's not bad? It's all right? Well, well done, you. <laughs> There's some jokes about coppers coming up. <laughs> Remember, they don't apply to you because you're not a real one. <laughs> 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 I 
Why is it difficult to play cards in the jungle? No, it's deforestation. <laughs> Cheetahs are actually endangered, so that is quite insensitive, sir. <laughs> what do you call a donkey with three legs? Monkey. Glue. <laughs> Just be honest with yourselves. If you've got a donkey with three legs, you're going to take a picture on the camera phone and then melt that fucker down. <laughs> What's brown and sticky? A stick. Anal. This next one's a little bit different. I think it's funny, which is obviously very important, but it's also educational. It teaches kids about the alphabet and also about social issues, which can be very difficult to discuss with the under fives. <laughs> Why did the H kill himself? Because the G had. <laughs> right, last one of these. What's yellow and dangerous? Shark-infested custard, or the discharge from my cock. <laughs> I'm joking, it is probably fine. <laughs> Just smells weird. <laughs> I get reviewed quite a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Journalists come along to the show and they write a little piece. Sometimes I'll look at it and think, oh, it's very nice. And then you'll look at it again a few days later and think, well, you could take that in two different ways. I'm going to read some reviews, see if you think I'm being paranoid. The Times said of this show, he couldn't be funnier. <laughs> The Guardian said, there's funny, then there's Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Catch him before he gets massive. <laughs> I was doing a gig up in Hull. It was the second day on the tour I was doing in Hull. And on the front of the theatre, they wrote in massive letters, due to public demand, he's back for one night only. <laughs> Doesn't that make it sound like the public got together and said, there's only so much of this bullshit we're going to stand for? <laughs> of course, we all say stupid things from time to time. I was chatting to a friend of mine, Peter, we're at a wedding. He was chatting about how much he wanted to have children. These are his exact words. He said, we'd love to have kids, but infertility runs in my family. <laughs> if you don't get that, you should be sterilised. <laughs> my uncle said, uh, I can't be asked to get my prostate checked. <laughs> That's an almost zen-like stupidity. That's so stupid, it's almost brilliant. <laughs> it's like those big matrix signs you get above the motorway. Do you know the ones, the big matrix signs, that say, this sign is not in use? <laughs> and you find yourself thinking, well, hang on, if that's true, how do I know that? <laughs> of course, I'm guilty of a fair amount of fuckwittery myself. I'm often putting my foot in it, getting it wrong. I was at the airport about six months ago, got talking to this guy that plays wheelchair rugby in the Paralympics. I'd just seen a documentary about it called Murderball, which is amazing, and I'd seen a bit of it on Sky Sports, so I knew something about it. We got chatting. Transpired in the conversation, I didn't know what the para in Paralympics stood for. <laughs> oh, I thought I knew, but I didn't. I imagine a few of you are in the same situation. All we'll have a think about what the para in Paralympics stands for. Stands for is not the right term to use there, actually. <laughs> have you all got something in your hands? You all any guesses? Spacker? <laughs> it's definitely not Spacker. Any other guesses? Paraplegic, that was my first guess. It's not until you say Paraplegic Olympics out loud you realise it's not that, is it? <laughs> paraplegic Olympics, hang on, that would just be blow football. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Paratroopers. Paratroopers. <laughs> well, like they were all injured during service and... And they thought we might as well have a sports day. Come on. <laughs> so, any other thoughts? Paralytic. Paralytic? <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's nothing the matter with them. They're just pissed. <laughs> They've turned up to the sports day and gone, what? 1,500 metres? You're having a fucking laugh. <laughs> I had a skin fall last night. I'll never make it. I'll never sit down. You can wheel me round. <laughs> no. Although there is a legless gag in there somewhere, but we'll leave it. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Paralyzed. Paralyzed. No, it's not paralyzed either. Paralyzed. Parallel. Par Parallel is the right answer. Well done, you gold star. <laughs> Big tick. <laughs> Another couple of. It's the parallel. Of course, it's the Parallel Olympics. When I say it, it's obvious, isn't it? Because it's parallel to the normal Olympics. Probably shouldn't say normal Olympics. <laughs> it's a minefield, this. Which, ironically, is probably how some of them got there. <laughs> But it's the parallel, it's parallel to the Olympics and it runs in the same sort of city that they're holding the Olympics in. It's a proper sporting event. Another couple of things while we're on the subject. 
If you're chatting to someone that plays wheelchair rugby in the Paralympics and you've seen a bit of it, you're chatting about it, you're being positive about it, don't at any stage, even if you're joking, don't ever refer to it as being like the real robot wars. <laughs> He laughed, but there was a definite tension. <laughs> also, final thing on this, never get confused between the Parallel Olympics, the Paralympics, and the Special Olympics. The Paralympics is a proper sporting event. The Special Olympics is the one where they're all winners. <laughs> Although, you try telling that to the bookies when your little fella comes in seventh. I can see some of you are shifting uncomfortably there. You're thinking, can we laugh at this sort of thing? Let me just reassure you, ladies and gentlemen, during that last bit, no-one in a wheelchair has ever walked out. <laughs> hmm. Now, I don't mind proper graffiti, you know. Gary has AIDS, your mum's a bender. <laughs> proper graffiti. But I don't like racism and I don't like racist graffiti and I've started to fight back. I saw a bit of graffiti last time I was in Felixstowe, written on a wall, someone had put, Asylum Seekers Out. So above it I wrote, Asylum Seekers In, and below it I wrote, Asylum Seekers Shake It All About. <laughs> I thought, well, that's cheered up, no end. <laughs> that gave me confidence. I went back to a rough pub near where I live in North London. Someone's written on the gents' wall, White Power. So across it I've written, Sill It Bang. <laughs> I saw a disgraceful piece of graffiti last time I was in Stoke-on-Trent. Someone had written on a wall, all coppers are cunts. I thought that apostrophe shouldn't be possessive. <laughs> Not about you. <laughs> I saw a brilliant sign on a police station wall. It said, wanted for sex attacks. <laughs> I didn't know there were vacancies. <laughs> I thought I should look into that. Flexible hours, you get to work outdoors, you get to meet new people. <laughs> Speaking of violent sexual crime, and I was. <laughs> the fella in Ipswich last year that was murdering all those prostitutes, I presume you all read about that in the papers as it was going on. Really grisly, morbid story, but you kind of can't look away. I think some of the reporting as that guy was murdering loads of prostitutes was very irresponsible. The news of the world led with the headline, The Killer is Out of Control. Now, to me, the headline, The Killer is Out of Control, implicitly suggests that there is an acceptable number of prostitutes to murder <laughs> in any given calendar month. <laughs> the problem with this fucking lunatic is the number he's killing is just not sustainable. <laughs> At this rate, we will run out of prostitutes in the Ipswich area. <laughs> and then where will we be? <laughs> Newcastle. <laughs> Shall we talk about everyone's favourite member of the royal family? Prince Harry. <laughs> Come on, the little ginger one that dresses as a Nazi. <laughs> That's the kind of behaviour we want from our inbred overlords. <laughs> now, Prince Harry was meant to go and fight in Iraq last year, but he couldn't go to Basra last July because he's ginger, he would melt. <laughs> so we didn't go, and actually, while the rest of his unit were fighting in Basra, he was found by a British journalist tracked down to a strip club in Canada. And the journalist went up to him and said, Are you Prince Charles' son? He said, no. <laughs> it got me thinking, ladies and gentlemen, because he's just got back from Afghanistan, what kind of preparation was that playboy lifestyle for fighting in a war? I know what you're probably thinking. You probably think it'd be much clearer if someone had juxtaposed strip clubs and war in a poem. <laughs> you're in luck. <laughs> I have. I've compared and contrasted strip clubs and war in a poem. It is simply entitled Strip Club War. Yeah, a little bit of culture for you, ladies and gentlemen. I will read it for you now. Strip Club War. Young men getting slaughtered. Bazookas everywhere. <laughs> Privates standing to attention. <laughs> grabbing their helmets. <laughs> Weapons going off. <laughs> Sobbing men desperately clawing at gashes. <laughs> as bodily fluids dribble out. <laughs> Sweethearts back at home wondering if they'll ever see you again. <laughs> the number of stiffs growing by the hour. <laughs> Freshly shaven twats shooting at anything with a beard <laughs> and regretting they'd come. The next generation spilling out of choppers onto hot barren mounds. It's more expensive than you think it'll be when you go in and the whole thing leaves a mess that'll take years to clean up. <laughs> and of course, Muslims don't like it. <laughs> I blame Bush.
I'd like to get to know you all as an audience, but it's difficult to get to know a lot of people in one go. There's only one of me, that's loads of you. What I've devised is a method. Moral dilemmas. These are questions to which there is no absolute wrong or right answer. Just your opinion tells me something about who you are as individuals and who you are as a group. So if everyone joins in, this works. So everyone say yes. Yes. Everyone say no. No. Everyone say I can think for myself. I can think for myself. <laughs> OK. Right, let's do a warm-up first. This doesn't count towards your final score. Just a warm-up, just to get you into the spirit of things. But if everyone could answer straight away, that would be great. Is it acceptable to kill a whale in order to save two pandas? Yes! That's about a 90% yes, I would say, this evening. You've thought, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Someone goes, no. No. All right. Don't worry, it's not going to happen. That's not the finale of the show. <laughs> Although I wish I'd thought of that. That'd be fucking brilliant. The best response I've had to that recently, I said, is it acceptable to kill a whale in order to save two pandas? And someone went, let them fight it out between themselves. <laughs> now, for better, for worse, this is the question I use to judge an audience, to judge individuals. If you could all answer, that would be great. Would you fuck your dad to save your mum? <laughs> You're looking so upset. It's easier for girls. <laughs> He's ugly. He's ugly. <laughs> Imagine that being a factor. <laughs> Imagine thinking, yeah, I would fuck my dad, but he's not a looker. <laughs> he's let himself go maybe five years ago. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> he's there. Oh, hi. <laughs> So, do you want me asking, is your mum here as well? Yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, we can actually do a proper test. <laughs> now, I've got snipers all the way around this building. <laughs> and they're pointing a gun at your mother, yeah? We're going to kill her. Your mum's been taken hostage. She's going to be killed. We would like you to bum your dad. Um, well... <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, of course it's difficult. I'm not saying you wouldn't be thumbing in a softie. That's fine. <laughs> I say, let her die. You say, let her die. <laughs> you're, uh, sorry, hang on, you're, you're, we're not in Norfolk. What are you booing? <laughs> you're booing a man saying, I wouldn't bum my dad. <laughs> Just take a moment to think about that. <laughs> All right, so you've made your decision. <laughs> Don't listen to Jimmy. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, Mum. It's all right, Mum. Is that, is that your daughter there? Same question to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love my job. <laughs> At what point did you think, as a family, this would be a good show to go and see? <laughs> Never mind that Lion King bullshit. <laughs> Let's bring the kids out to see a proper show <laughs> where we openly discuss incest. <laughs> the best response I've had to that, someone went, not again. <laughs> Sex education is extremely important. Telling young kids about the birds and the bees, absolutely key. Three quick things to remember. Firstly, you should know the children you tell. <laughs> Secondly, there is a level of detail that is considered too graphic. Twelve-year-olds don't need to know about rimming and such. <laughs> Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, you should only ever tell them. <laughs> I've got a friend that told me her new boyfriend looked like one of the proclaimers. I said, well, he can't. He either looks like both of them or neither of them. <laughs> I like it when identical twins stand face to face, because when identical twins stand face to face, just for a moment, you think, ooh, a vase. <laughs> I've got a friend that told me she was scared of dwarves. I said, you're scared of dwarves? Are you also scared of normal-sized people when they're far away? <laughs> if you're a dwarf and you're offended by that, grow up. <laughs> I saw a documentary recently on Channel 4, it was all about faith, and in it someone went, well, of course, Scientology is a made-up religion. <laughs> I thought, as opposed to... <laughs> so one of my favourite things is to get Christians talking about Scientology, because the Christian will go, Scientologists, they're nutters, they believe in aliens. <laughs> and then you can say to the Christian, what do you believe in again? <laughs> it's a benevolent zombie that's coming back to save you, isn't it? <laughs> 
Good luck with that. That will probably happen. <laughs> Has anyone been to Belfast? Yeah. Belfast, an amazing town, very friendly place. The amazing thing about Belfast, they can tell what religion you are just from your name. I went there with my friend Rabbi Lionel. <laughs> they just knew. <laughs> you ever done this? Have you ever had an argument with someone that you really care about, about something you couldn't give a fuck about? <laughs> I had an argument with a friend of mine that I've known for 15 years about whether tomatoes are a fruit or a vegetable. <laughs> Who cares? Also, it got me thinking, can't something be both a fruit and a vegetable? I mean, what if Graham Norton had a serious accident? <laughs> I realise that is a joke about a homosexual man being spasticated. <laughs> In my defence, I did call Graham and check he was fine with that, and he was. <laughs> Although I would add, that was a fucking awkward phone call to make. <laughs> Oscar Wilde famously wrongly imprisoned for homosexuality. At least that's what I thought. And then I did some further reading. Turns out, he was gay. <laughs> so, fair enough. <laughs> rules is rules. Come on, you vendor. <laughs> People say to me, you're gay, you just don't know you're gay. I always think that's going to come as a horrible shock, isn't it? <laughs> well, at some point, am I just going to be standing around minding my own business? <laughs> What's that in my ass? <laughs> you! <laughs> Someone shouted out the other night, gay shirt! I thought, oh, no. My shirt's been fucking men in the bum. <laughs> I thought that was a chocolate stain. <laughs> I tried to suck it out. Have you ever done this? Have you ever been driving along and you've hit a rabbit? The worst thing is the noise. That horrible, familiar sound of a hammer hitting a rabbit. <laughs> 97% of all dangerous driving offences are committed by men. You know what that means? It means 3% are committed by bloody women drivers. <laughs> you know who you are, you're a fucking menace. <laughs> I don't think speed cameras are fair. Who's with me? I can't see how they're... If I'm driving home from this gig at 12 midnight, yeah, and there's kids playing in the street, they've got bigger problems than me. <laughs> well, not anymore, they haven't, but... <laughs> but let's say I'm driving home from this gig, 12 midnight, let's say I'm doing 40 in a 30 zone, I get flashed by one of those cameras. How is it fair that my girlfriend gets three points on her licence? <laughs> that doesn't seem fair to me. She's already got 12 points. <laughs> She's going to have to go to jail. <laughs> Have you all seen that incredibly powerful commercial on television where the child morphs back to life, having been run over? Yeah. Incidentally, that's why you're not allowed to leave the scene of an accident, you miss the best bit. <laughs> that advert clearly states if you're doing 40 miles an hour and you hit a child, there's an 80% chance that child will die. If you're doing 30 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance that child will live. Here's my question. Where's the ad for swerving? <laughs> that advert's basically the government going, hey, watch out, there's a kid in the road. Slow down, take the edge off. <laughs> but it must learn its lesson. <laughs> How old did you say you were, sir? 14. You're 14 years old. Right, and what's your name? Sam. Sam, right. Let's say I'm driving to you, Sam. Okay. At, I don't know, 40 miles an hour. <laughs> and you run away at 10 miles an hour. It's an aggregate of 30, isn't it? <laughs> Not only have you given yourself a chance of survival, you've also learned a little something about maths. <laughs> it's a win-win. You all right? Mm. <laughs> Do you like girls yet? <laughs> you probably don't even know you're gay. Do you know you're gay? <laughs> you do, you're fully aware. OK, well, yeah, yeah, not. Definitely not, because we haven't got a camera pointing at you or anything. <laughs> Enjoy school. Let's do some improv, ladies and gentlemen. All I need is suggestions from you. Right, I need a historical figure. Nelson. Nelson? Oliver Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell. Noddy. <laughs> yeah, very much a mixed ability group this evening, isn't it? <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, Noddy. <laughs> Mother Teresa. God bless her. Mother Teresa, amazing woman, wasn't she? Very generous with her time. And, and all the ho you do look at her and think, yeah, a little bit of moisturiser wouldn't have fucking killed you. <laughs> No, I'm all for helping the poor, but just oil of you later, take the edge off that. <laughs> Fuck me, it's like a saddlebag. 
She looks like my balls. <laughs> I'm joking, my balls are in significantly better kit <laughs> than Mother Teresa's face. Henry, all right, let's go Henry VIII. He's a, he's a classic. Let's go Henry VIII, OK? All we know about him was he was a bit... Well, shall we say he was aggressive towards women? <laughs> he did what, sorry? He shagged loads of women. <laughs> yes. He was the king. <laughs> it's not going to be tricky to get a date, is it? <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm the king. <laughs> you want to see me cock? <laughs> and the crown jewels. <laughs> Easy. Um, OK, so well, let's go Henry VIII. Um, I need an accent. Peruvian? <laughs> How optimistic are you? <laughs> Australian, I can, I can do Australian. <laughs> are you? <laughs> are you get fucked? <laughs> are there Australians in? <laughs> well, what am I talking about Saturday night? They're working behind a bar. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, I need a superpower. America? <laughs> How's that helping? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I definitely said superpower, didn't I? <laughs> and you definitely said rape. <laughs> the power to rape for good, presumably, to, to prevent crime. So someone would have taken hostages, the police would be there, we can't get them out, they're all they're gonna kill the hostages. Rape boy. <laughs> can you see what you can Yeah, I could officer, don't worry, I'll get in there. I'll rape him first. <laughs> and then I'll rape the other fella. And then I'll I'll rape him back. <laughs> I don't think rape could really be construed as a super. The understanding of women. You s <laughs> How old are you, sir? You seem jaded before your time. You're 17. <laughs> How can you not understand 17-year-old women? All you need to know is that. <laughs> right. It's easy. Do you know how to buy cider? <laughs> cider? Wait to ripen and bang. <laughs> and then off to play on the PlayStation. <laughs> and if you get good enough with the PlayStation, you can bring her off in about half a minute. <laughs> bendy cock. A bendy cock? <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be handy so I can fuck things around corners. It's <laughs> like uh, the lo extra long arms. Like extra long arms? <laughs> Big veiny. <laughs> It's what, sorry? Inspector Gadget. Like Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Have you ever seen an episode of Inspector Gadget? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's good. I don't think that was Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I think you were abused as a child. <laughs> I'm just going to get out my special arm. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Superpower. Read minds. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Let's go, let's go for mind reading. Mind reading sounds like a, that's a good power to have. So, Henry VIII, Australian mind reading. OK. I need uh, a belief system. Any others? Buddhism. Could... Buddhism. Muslim. <laughs> Muslim, yes. Because the great thing about Islam is they can take a joke. <laughs> I think I might leave that one for the farewell tour. <laughs> go out with a bang, so to speak. Any other belief systems? Creationism. Creationism. Creationism is quite good. The, the crazies that believe that everything was built in seven days, is it? Yeah. Any creationists in? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really my target audience. <laughs> People that amazingly naive. God love them. Or Americans, as we call them. Uh, <laughs> OK, so a creationist, Henry VIII, Australian accent, uh, superpower, what do we go with? Re I knew that. <laughs> you just had to think it, and I would have got it. Hmm. Okay, finally, I need something you find in a kitchen. No, a, a woman. <laughs> oh. 
on 1974. <laughs> if I kitchen, a woman. <laughs> She'll have my tea on. <laughs> your mum? Who said your mum? <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> your mum. <laughs> your mum's in the kitchen. She'll make your tea and toast if you're nice. <laughs> mum! <laughs> your mum. That's what we're going for there, OK. Right, so we've got Henry VIII, Australian accent, mind reading, he's a creationist, your mum. <laughs> Shall we leave it there? <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> that is all the improv I do. That's my favourite bit, the bit where people shout out suggestions. The actual play bit at the end, I always think, is a bit shit. <laughs> I'm always suspicious they might just be making that up. <laughs> you actually look disappointed as an audience now. You're like, oh, I thought it was going to be really good. <laughs> the Aussie Henry VIII and his mum. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you want to get married? <laughs> I can read your fucking mind. Oh, shit's that? <laughs> what, sorry? Forgot I forgot your mum. <laughs> All right, there's Henry VIII fucking your mum. <laughs> you happy now? That's your mum. <laughs> you happy? Did we miss out your mum? Is she getting fucked by the king? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sheila? <laughs> yeah, take it, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I know you like it, I can read your fucking mind. <laughs> hey, you happy now? You now? <laughs> well, that's cheered things up, hasn't it? <laughs> For a moment there, that poor man was worried, is my mum not going to get fucked in this? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, unlucky. Um, <laughs> I'm much better when I've prepared stuff, ladies and gentlemen, and I was asked last year to write something about being British. I thought, well, my pleasure. I'd like to share it with you now. What makes Britain great is our ability to laugh at ourselves. And when I say ourselves, I mean other people. <laughs> and when I say laugh, I mean invade. <laughs> but Britain is proud to boast that we're home to the most hard-working, diligent and adaptable workforce in Europe, the Poles. <laughs> They're bloody good, aren't they? Yeah. Round of applause for the Poles. Of course, you get a lot of right-wing people saying, oh, these Poles, they come over here taking our jobs. I was thinking, if a guy from Poland arrives, he doesn't speak the language, doesn't have any money, doesn't know anyone, and he takes your job on the first day... <laughs> you're shit. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I was in a restaurant the other day. It said on the menu, all our food is made with love. I thought, I know a chip shop, they shut down for doing that. <laughs> I was in a restaurant with a friend. The waiter came up to take the order. I said, I'll have the fish of the day. And my mate went, oh, I wanted that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to lose a bit of weight at the moment, so I'm eating porridge every day for breakfast. Does anyone else eat porridge for breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking boring, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like four spoons in thinking, this is actually depressing. <laughs> I wouldn't mind dying. <laughs> I was so bereft of stimulus when I was eating my breakfast the other day, I read the box of porridge. It genuinely says on the box of porridge, no added colouring. <laughs> I thought, but it's grey. <laughs> what, do they think I think they might be adding extra grey? <laughs> A lot of people don't approve of size zero models, and they're called fat people. 5% <laughs> of toddlers are overweight, and they're called waddlers. <laughs> I've got a friend, she recently went to her GP just for the annual checkup. She was classified by her own GP as being morbidly obese. Who came up with that term? That's so unnecessarily harsh. Morbidly obese. As if she doesn't have enough on her plate. <laughs> Sounded sympathetic and then it turns out it was another joke about a big fat fatty. <laughs> Of course, it goes the other way, too. I've got another friend that just lost six stone. Well, I say she lost six stone, she lost a leg to diabetes. <laughs> Still, go, girl. 
slowly and carefully. <laughs> of course, there is no need to go on a diet. If anyone's thinking of going on a diet, there's no need. All you've got to do, here's the secret, have a photo of yourself taken holding up a pair of enormous trousers. <laughs> Doesn't matter how big you are, everyone thinks you've made a tremendous effort. <laughs> Job done. There's always a shot from the side as well. Always with a really smug expression of, look what a fat cunt I was. <laughs> Of course, there are some clues out there as to why we're getting bigger as a nation. Domino's Pizza is a very good clue. It's a very simple business, supply and demand. Very simple. If we demand something, they will supply it. They're happy to. They now make a double-decker pizza. How did that happen? People must have been phoning up going, Hello, at Domino's. <laughs> yes, how can I help you? I like a pizza. We get a lot of that. <laughs> what would you like as a topping? I love another pizza. <laughs> Of the five fruit and veg you're meant to eat every day, I think you know you're fat if you count Jaffa cakes. <laughs> Should we talk about Gillian McKeith, the woman from You Are What You Eat, begging the question, what did you eat, the witch from Rent-A-Ghost? <laughs> Some people like her, some people don't. I think she's a fucking disgrace. Because <laughs> what does she do for a living? She humiliates women. She takes a middle-aged woman who's let herself go a bit. She's a bit plump, big-boned. She's not a danger to shipping. <laughs> she's not hurting anyone, and she humiliates her on national television. Initially, she goes, this is what you eat in a week, you fat cow. <laughs> she doesn't say fat cow, but you can see it in her beady little eyes. <laughs> this is what you eat in a week. Has anyone noticed how that table of food she shows the big fat fatty? is exactly the same as the one Kerry Katona shows us all in the Iceland house. <laughs> and then, the piece de resistance. Shit into this. <laughs> what? Like it's the most natural thing in the world, she goes, shit into this. Then she's got the audacity, the brass neck of the woman, to go, your poo's a bit smelly. <laughs> it's made of shit, Gillian. I think I may have solved this riddle. <laughs> the reason that is a little bit reeky is it just fell out of her ass. <laughs> it's still warm, you fucking maniac. <laughs> Most people that get cosmetic surgery are disappointed with the results, but they look pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Have you ever got mixed up between car booting and dogging? <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it? I paid 50p to fuck a guy's wife. <laughs> Dogging, or pay and display, as I like to call it. <laughs> or park and ride. <laughs> Makeup sex is amazing after you've had an argument, but inappropriate if you've had a fight with the traffic warden. <laughs> Women get annoyed when men use the last of the toilet paper. Do you get annoyed at that, ladies? Yeah. So what I've done is I've stopped wiping my ass. <laughs> And still she's upset. <laughs> and women, in fact, use twice as much toilet paper as men. Which is fair enough, they've got double the number of bottoms. <laughs> I quite like that as a term for a woman or a lady. I like the term double bum. <laughs> Have you met my double bum? <laughs> no, two bums, yes. One at the back, as is traditional. Another little fella around the front. <laughs> little fella's maybe the wrong term to use, but... <laughs> I'll use it in a sentence. I was on holiday with my double bum. <laughs> we were in Thailand. We were having a little bit of lunch in a cafe on the beach. She said, I'm just going to go for a pee. I'll be back in a minute. She was back almost immediately. She said, I couldn't go. It was disgusting. My question is simple. Has that ever happened to a man in the history of the world? Ever. <laughs> Let's face it, fellas. If we're going for a piss, it is going to happen. <laughs> the gents could be a pile of rotting corpses, yay high. <laughs> The worst you're going to get from a bloke is you want to breathe through your mouth in there. <laughs> she said a weird thing to me recently. She said she wanted to wear a blindfold during sex. I thought, well, fine, on the one hand, you want to take away one of your senses in order to heighten the other four, in order to increase the erotic pleasure of lovemaking. Let's give that a go. Sounds fun. <laughs> On the other hand, I was thinking, what you're really saying is, I will fuck you, but I'm going to have to cover my eyes. <laughs> Men propose on their knees. Do you know why that is? It's to get them used to asking for sex when they're married. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird reaction. Well done, you. 
<laughs> women like to dance with men because women instinctively know if they dance with a man, they'll be able to tell what he's like in the bedroom. And it is quite a good indicator. I tend to dance for about 30 seconds and have a bit of a cry. <laughs> I get the feeling you're laughing at me, not with me there, man. <laughs> it's very cruel. <laughs> I've read an article recently about British men's ultimate sexual fantasy, and it surprised me. The results of it surprised me. It was a proper survey. They asked 3,000 men their opinion. I'd like to do a little straw poll in here this evening, because the results of this, I was shocked. Ultimate sexual fantasy. Has anyone got one they wouldn't mind admitting to? Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba, it's a specific person that you, that you would like to bone. Well, I happen to know Jessica Alba does an awful lot of work for charity. Maybe... <laughs> Um, any other ultimate sexual fantasy? My girlfriend. My girlfriend. <laughs> well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> my girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. Yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's OK. <laughs> Can I just clarify? You are a beautiful lady, no disrespect to you. <laughs> but he heckled, I had to put him down. <laughs> and the only way to get to him was through you. <laughs> I like the way as well. I suggested your girlfriend wasn't good looking enough and you applauded. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be using those hands later on, won't you? <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? A Viking helmet. A Viking helmet? <laughs> what have you got? Two vaginas? <laughs> Good, lovely. Any other ultimate sexual fantasies? Schoolgirl. Schoolgirl? <laughs> and then you've pointed at your man. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've got a, we've got a special term for a schoolgirl fantasy now. We call it pedo. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Do you like what do you like? Schoolgirl school school teacher. Schoolgirl school teacher. though, really. <laughs> yeah, no, because the specialist term for the schoolgirl unit. Yeah, it's a, you, you are a pedo. <laughs> it's no, it's good. Look at the positive. You get to be on a list. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Everyone in the neighbourhood knows where you live. That's convenient, isn't it? Do you make her dress up as a schoolgirl? She's done it. <laughs> <laughs> She's done it. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't wash her. Bestiality! <laughs> Bestiality. <laughs> well, easy, easy. Let's just think this through, cos bestiality, a lot of people just write off as a terrible thing. Let's look at both sides. Let's say you fuck a cow, and that could happen. <laughs> You sound like a nutter. <laughs> no, let, let's imagine you fuck a cow. You haven't actually harmed the cow. Cows are fucking enormous. <laughs> You're not going to trouble it with your tiny cock. <laughs> but, but, you know, but you've probably just stressed the animal. Daisy's probably thinking, what the fuck is he up to? <laughs> On the upside, though, you've had a whale of a time, and if you have a baby with a cow, it'll be a minor tour. <laughs> <laughs> like bully from bullseye. <laughs> Just putting it into terms he'll understand. <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? An amputee. An amputee. <laughs> it's not Paul McCartney, is that I can't see? It's a bit weird, the Paul McCartney thing, isn't it? I mean, he's Paul McCartney. He's, a, he's a, a national treasure, a global icon. He was in The Beatles and he couldn't find a woman with four working limbs. <laughs> That's what he had to make do. People... Uh, she actually... She accused him, I believe, of, of hitting her. Which is... Um, do you think he hit her? <laughs> do, do you think he hit... Do you think Paul McCartney hit Heather Mills? I, I don't think he did, but, I mean, if I'm honest, I would have. <laughs> No, I'm not advocating violence against women in any way, shape or form, but it'd be interesting to know whether she would spin round like a swing ball. <laughs> Whoa! And actually, to be honest, she accused him of hitting her with her false leg. <laughs> that is disgraceful, and that is a lie. 
I can, I can tell you why that is definitely a lie. Because if you hit someone with a false leg, technically, that is a kick. <laughs> the reason I mention this is because in this article it said that the most common ultimate sexual fantasy, ultimate sexual fantasy, remember, in the UK is to have two women at the same time. It got me thinking, well, I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't be fun to have two women at the same time. It is. <laughs> Thank you, show business. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you what I'd be if I wasn't a comedian. A virgin. <laughs> I just think if it's your ultimate sexual fantasy, you're only limited by your imagination. Two women at the same time is a bit lame. You can have anything you want. You could have a woman with 15 tits riding a unicorn across a rainbow. <laughs> Never mind, two women at the same time. I mean, at least, at the very least, go for three. Because <laughs> think about it, how much better would it be? Having sex with two beautiful, attractive women, if you were safe in the knowledge, all the while you were fucking them, there was another one outside washing the car. <laughs> that would make it just a little bit better, wouldn't it? <laughs> I told my girlfriend my ultimate sexual fantasy was to have two women at the same time, and she agreed. But then she was livid when I told her she wasn't either of them. <laughs> she was going to be the one outside washing the car. <laughs> I did have a threesome once. This was many years ago, about eight, nine years ago. I was seeing this girl. It transpired she had a twin. So I asked. You don't ask, you don't get. I asked, I got. There's a lesson in life. <laughs> it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> One of the best experiences of my life, because if anything, a twin was better looking than her and an all-round great guy. <laughs> yeah, you knew something was coming, <laughs> but you didn't realise it was going to be her brother in her. <laughs> Are there people in from the West Country going, I don't really get it? <laughs> now, I love my job. I love telling jokes to people, but essentially what I do for a living, I'm a jester, I'm a clown, I'm a fool. Sometimes I want to be taken a bit more seriously, so I'd like to take a five-minute time-out from telling you jokes, and I'd like to throw some ideas at you, some thoughts that I've had, ladies and gentlemen. But to help me with this, I'm going to bring on a trio of jazz musicians. What? <laughs> I am. Can I get some jazz musicians, please? Thanks very much. Appreciate it. These aren't jokes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to throw some ideas at you, some thoughts that I've had. Right. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, imagine we're sitting in a cafe on the left banks of the Seine. You know one of those smoky cafes we're smoking gulois, we're drinking absinthe. We're just chatting, shooting the breeze, ladies and gentlemen. Just talking about love and life and ideas, thoughts, yeah? Not just jokes, ideas, yeah? Let's have a little bit of, little bit of jazz just to set the mood, yeah? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of atmosphere. A little bit of atmosphere, so it's like a kind of smoky cafe. You know a kind of smoky cafe? <laughs> yeah, a smoky cafe. Not a cafe where there's a chip fat fire. <laughs> where did we get the smoke machine from? Duran Duran? <laughs> I look like Heather Mill sitting too close to the fire. <laughs> What happens if you spill carpet cleaner? <laughs> if an amnesiac got Alzheimer's, would they forget they couldn't remember anything? <laughs> what size do you think the Queen's bed is? <laughs> if you walk backwards in flip-flops, are they flop flips? <laughs> Venison's dear, isn't it? The Asterix cartoon character, Asterix. I wonder how rude is his real name? <laughs> if you were a necrophiliac, paedophile that was into bestiality, would you fuck omelettes? <laughs> Churches are depressing. I mean, why build all of them in graveyards? <laughs> My local church is raising money for a giant thermometer. <laughs> Do you know the best cure for depression? Suicide. <laughs> the Great Barrier Reef is all very well, but it doesn't seem to be keeping the Australians in. <laughs> Consider the positive. You're never alone with schizophrenia. <laughs> if you're schizophrenic and you're offended by that, you can both fuck off. <laughs> Sometimes at self-service restaurants or buffets, 
I tip myself. <laughs> Bad enough if a spider lays its eggs underneath your skin and they hatch out. Worse if it's a goose. <laughs> if you're nine months premature, you're just a stain. <laughs> when someone says, I hear voices, I always think, that'll be your ears. <laughs> I was thinking, what is it that separates us from the animals? Fences. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but I heard about this guy that fell out of the 13th floor window of a building, and he died. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> I've had an idea for a shop selling used artificial limbs. It's called the second-hand, second-hand store. <laughs> a shoehorn. Sounds like the kind of thing a foot fetishist might get. <laughs> I'm writing a book on dream interpretation. It's called You've Had Too Much Cheese. <laughs> a snail can travel over a razor blade without cutting itself. Or to put it another way, sometimes scientists get bored. <laughs> Women blink twice as much as men. Brilliant. Think of all the stuff we can get away with. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I was very disappointed when I went to Wet and Wild. It's a water park. <laughs> we English are no good at foreign languages. Until we go abroad, where English is a foreign language. <laughs> what was the best thing before sliced bread? Bread knife? <laughs> no, massive sandwiches. <laughs> if I had an optician's, I'd make them do the shop sign in a blurry font. <laughs> no man is an island, said the island man. I'd like to get another tattoo, but I haven't got a tattoo. So what you like about pacifists? <laughs> it's always darkest just before dawn, and we call that nighttime. <laughs> Travel Lodge's slogan is nothing like a good night's sleep. <laughs> There's a thin line between obsessive and compulsive. It's a hyphen. <laughs> I was going to leave my body to science. And then I thought, no, I'll leave it to geography. <laughs> Why do you never hear about anyone being given five months to live? <laughs> Some men never tell their dads that they love them. And I guess that's just because they're not gay. <laughs> People have skeletons in the closet, and gay men come out of the closet. Do you think the gay men are coming out of the closet because they're scared of the skeletons? <laughs> Confucius said, how do you know you're a man dreaming you're a butterfly and not a butterfly dreaming you're a man? How do I know I'm not a butterfly? I drove here, you twat. <laughs> Scientists have discovered a cure for the fear of flying. 22 hours on a coach. <laughs> I went to see a hypnotist show and I really enjoyed it, which made me suspicious. <laughs> right. Final thought. I had an out-of-body experience. I was beside myself. <laughs> well, that's quite enough of that sort of thing, I think, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the trio there. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. Cheers. Might be a good time now, as we as we clear away our jazz trio. God love you for that. It was lovely. Has anyone got any questions for me? Has anyone got any? Got a criminal record. Have I got a criminal record? <laughs> yes, most rapes in an hour. <laughs> I'm going to take a photo of you, ladies and gentlemen, lest I forget you. You know, well, it's a big deal for me recording a DVD. I thought I'd take a little photo. Yeah, yeah go on. Once. Is it right? She likes you watching her pee. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> that's it. 
That's it, the, the, the question I get asked that every show. <laughs> It's weird that you would ask that. So, because she likes a lot of people to watch her pee. Um, is that your thing? You like people to watch you pee? Well, clearly, yes. <laughs> he didn't say that for no reason, did he? Do you remember earlier when you said he was a pedo for making you dress up as a schoolgirl? <laughs> I think it might be payback time. <laughs> but surely you could just dress her as a schoolgirl and have her do a wee on you. That's fine. <laughs> that plays into your whole pedo fantasy. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Apart from anyone with any sort of sense of taste and decency, <laughs> who are frankly horrified by you too. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Sam. Sam. Hi, Sam. What? Sorry. Southwell. Southwell. Yeah, definitely. I need a surname for this. <laughs> I'm not in charge of the register. Don't worry about that. <laughs> So, and what is it about being watched pee that you enjoy? Well, just tell us. We're all interested to know. Well, you do, so... It's not like that. What is it like? we <laughs> <laughs> a glass of water, we'll all find out. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, if you live with someone, you should feel comfortable enough to do anything in front of them. <laughs> I'm, 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 all for... <laughs> I'm all for that, madam, yes. Once you've, you know, once you've been with someone, there's a level of intimacy that suggests that you would be uh, able to pee in front of them or, or maybe shit on their chest. <laughs> but some people aren't like us, baby. <laughs> some people don't think in the way... They're closed-minded. They've got a sense of, I don't know, appropriate occasion. <laughs> It's all right, we're not taping this for... Oh, no, we are. <laughs> Lovely golden showers. <laughs> Any other thoughts? What car, what car do I drive? I don't actually drive a car, sir. I roll in one. <laughs> Motherfucker, yeah, with the bitches in the back, yeah! Any other questions, thoughts? What's your favourite type of cheese? What's my favourite type of cheese? <laughs> Knob. <laughs> Where's the best place you performed? The best place I've performed? I'd have to say in your girlfriend. <laughs> I saw a headline in the paper, it said, Man held after rape. I thought they cuddled. <laughs> I called the Rape Helpline Centre, they suggested I bought a balaclava. <laughs> PC has gone mad, you can't say Siamese anymore, so I guess my cat is a conjoined twin. <laughs> Speaking of hilarious birth defects... Did you all read about that little girl born in India with eight limbs? Yeah. Incredible. She, she was born into a Hindu family, so they thought she might be the reincarnation of a goddess. That or a spider. <laughs> but the test for that is pretty simple. They just pop them in a bath and see if they can get out on their own. <laughs> How annoyed would you be if you got home and your partner said to you, I've got HIV? I'd be fucking livid. <laughs> it's H. <laughs> I like to try and see the silver lining. I see the world through rose-tinted glasses. I think it's because of this job. Even something as awful as the AIDS epidemic. I like to think of AIDS, in my little head, as a massive game of gay it. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Chase me. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to sound homophobic. All homosexuals are fucking arseholes. <laughs> yeah. And why not? It's a bloody good laugh. <laughs> A lot of Americans are still bizarrely touchy about the Twin Towers, but what you have to accept seven years on is we needed a new Wembley. <laughs> if you think that's offensive, wait for this. <laughs> I've had an idea for a money-making scheme. Twin Tower Jenga. <laughs> that's not even it. The hook is, when one of the towers collapses, you shout, Jihad! <laughs> 
Osama bin Laden. Say what you like about the man, he is world hide-and-seek champion. <laughs> I was out in town earlier, I saw a disabled toilet, someone had written on it out of order. I thought, I know what disabled means. <laughs> When I was a kid, I was never scared of the Daleks. I used to be spooked out by the Daleks, but whenever they'd come on, I'd just go, well, if they ever came here, I'd just go upstairs. <laughs> they can't get me if I go upstairs. <laughs> but now when I watch Doctor Who, I'm petrified because of all the wheelchair access we put in everywhere. <laughs> they can get anywhere they fucking like now. <laughs> we're frankly, we're sitting ducks. <laughs> it would be remiss of me, ladies and gentlemen, not to talk to you all about the environment because that is the big issue which has upset the homeless no end. <laughs> a carbon footprint is a metaphor for the mark you leave on the earth as you walk through your lives. Of course, I don't have one, because I drive everywhere. <laughs> and it is twice as bad if you're Christian, because you've got Jesus traipsing alongside you. <laughs> I, ju I don't think they should have called it global warming. I think they should have called it Earth Toasty. <laughs> or Planet Snuggles. <laughs> Just all sounds too nice, doesn't it? If we don't do something now, we could end up as snug as a bug in Iraq. <laughs> I'm trying to take global warming seriously, but, you know, what can you do? I'm driving everywhere at twice the speed, so I get there in half the time. <laughs> and I've stopped eating Fox's Glacier Mints. <laughs> I tell you who I feel sorry for when there's flooding in the UK. I feel sorry for the fire brigade. Because they get 5,000 phone calls a day when there's flooding, going, Who's that the fire brigade? My house is underwater. Yeah, we're not really trained for that. <laughs> That's almost the opposite of what we do for a living. <laughs> Do you want to give us a buzz back if it catches light? <laughs> OK, bye-bye. <laughs> Tell you who annoys me when there's flooding. The guy in the high street in a canoe. <laughs> Every bit of news footage, there's a guy in the high street in a canoe going... <laughs> Have you not got a canoe? <laughs> Have you got a car? I've got a canoe. <laughs> Who's that smug twat? <laughs> and where the fuck is he going? <laughs> I'm off to Boots. <laughs> I've never been in a canoe. <laughs> I should really write a joke about a gay dinosaur dancing. <laughs> Women usually take care of contraception within a relationship, but some men do, and they're called dads. <laughs> I'm not sure about abortions being available three months into pregnancy. I think they should be available right the way up to GCSEs. <laughs> I like the phrase, performed an abortion. Do you think anyone's ever gone, ta-da? <laughs> a lot of people are worried that the artificial creation of sperm in laboratories means that men are essentially obsolete now. Women don't need men anymore because they can artificially create sperm in laboratories. What do you think about that, ladies? Yay. Luckily, they keep the artificially created sperm in jam jars. <laughs> so you still need us to... I'm not sure if that's exactly how artificial insemination works. <laughs> but you get the gist. <laughs> There's nothing rude about gist. You're making your own jokes now. <laughs> My girlfriend said to me recently, we can't have sex, I've got a headache. I said, I'm going to be right at the other end. <laughs> Do you want to get back to me if you get a pain in your JJ? <laughs> that's right, I said JJ. what of it? <laughs> I've got an awkward question for you. It's awkward whether you're here on a first date or whether you're in a long-term relationship. It's awkward for everyone. Should you spit or swallow following oral sex? <laughs> Goggles. <laughs> well, there's a fella there that loves the taste of sponge. <laughs> now, it's an awkward question. It's very much the cutting edge of sexual politics. I'm going to sort this out for you once and for all. You'll never have to think about it again, ladies and gentlemen. Should you spit or swallow following oral sex? It doesn't matter. Once I've ejaculated, I'm asleep. <laughs> you can do what you fucking like. You can gargle the national anthem for all I care. As long as it doesn't wake me up or interfere with you calling your cab. <laughs> I'll let the book of that thing, please. Sorry, that was misleading. She swallowed. That was a deaf girl I was fucking. <laughs> if you've got deaf friends, if you've got deaf friends, you should never do the deaf voice. Just say things like that. That is pretty much kryptonite to the deaf. 
If you really want to fuck with deaf friends, say things like that. Because <laughs> then they know you're saying something. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. How was the deaf girl in that joke using the phone? <laughs> if you're deaf and you're offended by anything you've heard... <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to leave you with a story about shouting out. I like it when people shout out, when they join in in life, whether it's a comedy show or just out in the world. I was at a tennis match eight years ago watching Tim Henman play. I'm a big fan of Tim Henman. Any time he wins a point, he pretends to punch a midget. <laughs> Are there any midgets in? I didn't see you, but then that is part of your charm. <laughs> this guy behind me in the stalls shouts something brilliant out. He waits until Tim Henman's walking in to have his little drink of barley water. You know the way they do. They have about ten games, they go, little drink of barley water. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> so he's just walking in to have his little drink, and this guy shouts, Tim! Tim, there's a bit of shit at the end of your racket! <laughs> and he looks. <laughs> And the bloke goes, not that end. <laughs> that was Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. That's nice of you. Thank you. Thanks. Good. It's a brilliant job, this. It's lovely. You spend an hour and a half talking to people, telling them jokes, building up this reservoir of goodwill. But then you're expected just to fuck off. <laughs> it's a bit weird. With your permission, I'd like to piss away some of that goodwill... Yeah. ..on an unpleasant joke. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll tell a joke that's a bit edgy, and I feel, as an audience, you go, ''Oh, that's a little bit close to the... Go on, then, you. <laughs> what are you like?'' <laughs> I'd like to tell one now that'll make you go... <laughs> oh. Would you like to hear it? Yes! Well, it's a joke about love. Can love conquer all? All do the practicalities of life get in the way? Well, a great example of this is made to December relationships, relationships where there's a bit of an age gap. Can love conquer that divide? Or does life get in the way, the practicalities? There's probably as many different opinions as there are people in this room. Here's my opinion, for what it's worth. I think you know a girl is too young for you if you're having to make the aeroplane noise to get your cock in her mouth. <laughs> Here comes the train into the tunnel. <laughs> There's three things I liked about that joke. Firstly, I, I like the fact it's a bit edgy. I like edgy jokes. It's about as edgy as I'd want to be. Second thing I like about it, next time you're being intimate with your partners... <laughs> I know you're sat there thinking, I think he's a bit too mature for that. He's thinking, ba da 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 Third thing I like about that joke, probably later on tonight, maybe tomorrow or the next day, someone's going to say to you, oh, you were at a comedy show, tell us a joke. <laughs> I guarantee you that is all you're going to be able to think of. <laughs> and you'll fuck it up. I was fucking a child in the face. <laughs> you were what, you fucking maniac? I spend a lot of my life driving around the country doing gigs, and I'm often driving back late at night. I don't know how you feel about it, but I always pick up hitchhikers. If I see a hitchhiker, I will pick them up. They always say the same thing to me. They always say, but I don't live in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to end this evening by talking about heckling. I like a bit of heckling. It's great fun when people have come to see your show and they feel they can join it. It's like everyone's friends. It's great. But when you start out in this business, oh, my God, it can be cruel. I've got a friend that was doing a support act. And obviously, if you're doing a support act, people haven't paid to see you, they're paid to see someone else, and you're sort of getting in their way. <laughs> this friend of mine, he's a very funny boy, he was supporting a very famous comedian in Oxford, and someone from the back of the room, as he was halfway through his act, and he was struggling, fair enough, but he didn't need this. Halfway through his act, someone shouted, you're ruining our evening. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, it happens to me all the time. It happened a couple of weeks ago. A guy sitting where you're sitting there, sir, front and centre, his phone went off. Now, everyone's got a mobile phone. Someone's going to leave it on by mistake. It's not the end of the world. Just switch it off. Not a problem. He took the call. <laughs> so there's me and 2,000 people going, what the fuck is this guy on? 
he totally confidently he went, I'm at a comedy show. And then there was a pause and he went, not really. <laughs> not really. I'll leave you with this. It has been a pleasure talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave you with this. This is the harshest heckle I've ever had to deal with. I was doing a gig in uh, Edinburgh at Late in Life. It doesn't start till one o'clock in the morning, so they're all out of their minds on heroin and shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it's a late-night gig, everyone's drunk and high and out of their minds, and, and it's all going quite well. I'm about ten minutes into the gig, and, you know, doing my usual thing. It's about eight years ago, I was pretty new to this game. And this guy from the side shouts very clearly, loudly, confidently, just as I'm halfway through a joke, My mum died of cancer! <laughs> I thought, shit, the bed, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought, well, I'll do with this logically and in order. I, I, I said, well, firstly, I wasn't talking about mums, and secondly, I wasn't talking about cancer. <laughs> And he came back with the epically harsh, No, but it was funnier than this. <laughs> Let's now be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and I've spent the last year wandering around Britain playing about 160 shows to the great British public. I've got a carbon footprint like a Wookiee. Um, obviously, when I'm chatting to people in the audience, sometimes it's funny. And when it's funny, what we like to do is take that little audio clip and then get little sort of boffiny people to animate it. Um, here, ladies and gentlemen, for your delectation and delight, are some cartoons. That's cartoons. It's like, it's like a pun. It's like a joke. Remember those jokes? Yeah, it's funny. Cartoons. Enjoy. Any other questions or anything? Really an ignorant bastard off stage. I'm, I'm, am I really an ignorant bastard? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty really ignorant, yeah. You know, ignorant means handsome. <laughs> Are you really ignorant? Oh, well, I suppose. I'm self-confident about my ability to use words. Yeah, maybe, maybe more so than some. But are you really ignorant? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not, not that ignorant. No, I, no. I think people people often think I'm. You know, I'm going to be really aggressive when they meet me. I sort of come up and go, oh, can you sign this? And you go, oh, all right, of course I can. They go, oh, he's not a total cunt. <laughs> Massively surprised. Now, what, what makes you think I'm arrogant? I presume that's what the word you were shooting for. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I imagine when you do spell check, it goes, oh, can you... <laughs> can you give me another clue? Can you... Could you use it in a sentence? Just... <laughs> it's just numbers. Um, do, do I come across as arrogant, do you think? <laughs> I come across as a cunt. Well, do you know what? I'm thinking about keeping the £15 you paid for a ticket. <laughs> what, sorry? It's like twelve pounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that looks a fool. <laughs> you pay twelve pounds to see a cunt. <laughs> How little is there going on in Aylesbury that you went? Fucking hate that Jimmy Car. <laughs> you going to the gig? Yeah, I'm going to the gig. <laughs> Nothing else to do. <laughs> Do you not like me, or do you think I'm funny, but you think I'm a bit weird, or what? You're a bit weird, but you're funny, so... Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not that. 
arrogant. <laughs> I tell you what, shall we all say it together? <laughs> so let's not single anyone out. I'm not going to single you out, I'm not going to single you out, I'm not going to single you out. Let's all say arrogant together. Because then we'll have had a fun evening, but also would have learnt a word. <laughs> Lovely. I will say I'm a little bit patronising. <laughs> that means when you talk down to someone. <laughs> Any questions? Anyone want to chip in? Everyone to the wrong way. Do I need to be here for the questions? I, I didn't realise they were going to be group-based. It's England. We all... We all won, in a sense. If you, if you can live vicariously through other men, then, oh. Who, who will be playing? France. Who, sorry? France. France? Is that near France? <laughs> uh, so we beat France in a, in a game of rugby. Well done. Of course, the big innovation in rugby was the introduction of the ball. Before then, it was just buggery. <laughs> you know how it was invented, though? It was, it, it was not far from here, rugby, at the school. You know, you know the story of how it was invented? Some boys were playing football, yeah? Yeah, and one of the boys said, this isn't gay enough. <laughs> what, what do you do? I'm not from the DSS, there's no... <laughs> what, what do you do? I'm on the social. You're, you're on the social? Is it easier if I just ask, is there anyone that's not on the social? <laughs> if there is, I'm presuming you work at the social. <laughs> on the social makes it sound much more fun, though, doesn't it? Than, I'm on benefits. <laughs> makes it sound like that's a bit of a pain in the ass. The social. I go, I'm going down the social. They may be dancing. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Should Wales and England separate? Should Wales and England separate? <laughs> I, what you need, sir, is a paper and some degree of education. No, I... <laughs> there is... There is, a, there is a Welsh Parliament, if I'm, if I'm not very much mistaken. I mean, basically it doesn't fucking do anything. But let's not, <laughs> let's not, let's not um, be like that. No, uh, no, I don't think they should. Do you share the English perspective that we sponge off you? Do I share the English perspective that you sponge off us? <laughs> what, sorry? I think I've asked three people what they do for a living. Two of them are on benefits. <laughs> you think we're sponges? <laughs> what do you do for a living, sir? Uh... How long does it take you to do your hair? How long does it take me to do my hair? Uh, literally no time at all. I mean, I wash it on a regular basis, and then it goes like that. <laughs> You, you, you don't like it? I love it. You love it? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good on you. Um, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit anachronistic, isn't it? It looks like it was cut in the 1930s. Is it a wig, too? Is it a wig? Yeah. If you had a wig, you wouldn't necessarily go... <laughs> you wouldn't go, I'd like a 1930s quiff, please. <laughs> no, 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 it isn't. I do wear a merkin, though. <laughs> You wear a wig? No, well, not there. <laughs> the pubic wig. <laughs> what, sorry? Does it itch? Does it itch? <laughs> yeah, but that's got more to do with other things. <laughs> I should never have fucked her. No one has freckles on their vagina. <laughs> what, sorry? Uh, okay, some of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 26. 
True story. I was, I was waiting for something consensual. <laughs> what did my mum say? That's very funny. What are you doing? Uh, why is she Irish? She was Irish. Is anyone willing to divulge what their ultimate sexual fantasy is? What, sorry? Mother daughter. Mother daughter. <laughs> You've got to admire his honesty there. His own mother. <laughs> his, his own mother and his own. He's not from. <laughs> he's not from Abergavenny. <laughs> that's appealing about the mother-daughter thing. I can't quite see the attraction. I imagine the mother-in-law would be quite complaining. No, oh, that's right, fucking her the whole time. <laughs> Here's me licking your balls. <laughs> Any other questions? Let me get a little photo. What, sorry? Why am I doing stand-up? Stand yeah. Because cunts like you will give me 20 quid a pop. <laughs> I'm not for a second calling you a cunt, sir. It just seems a bit odd as a thing to say when you've come to see me. <laughs> you were forced. <laughs> what do you mean you were forced? <laughs> Your friend forced you to come. Yeah. And you're not liking it. <laughs> you put, well, what, would, what do you like jokes about? Maybe I could do something specifically for you. Jokes. You like racist jokes? Well, maybe we could all club together and get you tickets to see Jim Davidson. That'd be nice. I wrote, I wrote one joke that I think's a bit racist. So I, I, I didn't put it in the show, but I think it's quite... I don't know if it is racist, because it's more about accents than it is about race. North Korea, and this is just for you. North Korea and Japan don't get along. They never have. And I don't think they ever will, ladies and gentlemen. You know what the problem is? Neither side can say they're sorry. <laughs> now, fuck off, you racist cunt. <laughs> yeah, a racist in Brixton. Good luck going home, mate. Any other... Um, imagine that being your complaint. Oh, do we have to go and see him? He's not even racist. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is rubbish. He doesn't seem to hate anyone. Mm. Any other ultimate, genuine ultimate sexual fantasies rather than just weirdness? Go on. The window. The window? Yeah. The window? What the fuck is the window? Your, your, your girlfriend's up against the window, doggy. Your mate's in the cupboard, you swap round, go round the window and wait there. <laughs> okay, oh, right, 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 okay. So this, this, is his, this is his ultimate sexual fantasy. You're fucking a girl, already this is far-fetched. Already... Already we're in the realms of fantasy. Okay, so you're fucking a woman, yeah? You're fucking her, and you've got a friend in a cupboard. OK, so it's already a bit gay as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You're fucking ruined. Da, ba, ba. Yeah, no, we're going to make love, darling. Could you point that way towards the window? No, I just like it. I've got a breeze. <laughs> this is how I work, OK? And then you see if... Ba, 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 ba. And then you, you make an excuse. You say, I've just got to... I'll be back in a second. She can't notice. She can't notice. Course, yeah. yeah. She's got to be paralysed from the waist down, then. <laughs> oh, I see how it would work for you because you have a tiny penis. <laughs> so she's not sure whether it's in or not. She's just happily flicking through a magazine, <laughs> looking out the window. So you've got a, you, a new, you, your friend comes up, he's got a similar size cock to you. you go, oh, and he goes, hang on, you tag out, I presume. 
and then, whoa, he's in. That's a rape taking place now. Is it, is it, that's a rape occurring now. Someone's having sex with her against her. Well, you're, he's raping her. He's the rapist. You've done nothing. You've aided and abetted. You've greased the baking tray, so to speak. You look genuinely appalled, madam, I'm sorry. He started it. And then you go around and wait for your girlfriend as she's being raped. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that is... Tell you what, Stephen, his romance isn't dead. <laughs> you look genuinely appalled, ladies. God love you for that. Can I, can I ask you, sir, are you expecting an important call? You keep on getting your phone out and having a... No, I got a text message. You got a text message? Oh! You got a text message, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fuck this. It was his mum. Who was it? My girlfriend. You haven't got a girlfriend. <laughs> You've got a girlfriend, yeah. and she texts you. Yeah. Right. From, from what? Imaginary land? <laughs> Go on, what did she text to say? Tell us the story. Um, she won a raffle. She, the... she won a raffle? <laughs> Are you going out with a much older woman? <laughs> oh, I want to meet raffle. <laughs> I'm in a very good mood. <laughs> I can't find my teeth, I'll have to suck you off without them. Mmm, <laughs> gummy. Uh, where did you win a raffle? At the uh, work Christmas party. At the work Christmas party? And where, did, where does she work? Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's? <laughs> oh, A little bit of orange uniform going on. Do you sometimes pretend you're fucking an Oompa Loompa? <laughs> well, you do. Gynomastia. Should we talk about gynomastia? Gynomastia is the um, men getting boots. Moves. Man boots. Or man tits. Mitts. <laughs> oh, what the man, the man in boots. The weird thing about the man boots is men are really self-conscious about it now and getting cut, you know, they don't want to go to the beach or on holiday because they feel they can't take their shirt off. They're just, it's horrible. I say, look at the positive. Yeah. If, you've got, if you're getting man boots, you can add a whole new dimension to a wank. <laughs> be at home of an afternoon thinking I might have one off the wrist, we didn't get broadband for nothing. <laughs> You're just about to and you think, hang on, no, I'm better than that. Tits first, I'm not a slag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> same with the experience. Same experience, yeah. What, having a wank? <laughs> I'm 35, mate. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> You sound Scottish, it doesn't cost anything, I imagine you do. You've got what at the moment? Easy access. You've got easy access. About sort of beer. Getting old. In English? In, in English, I think he's saying I'm a member of a ring. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Someone thrown some heroin or shortbread or something. Just like <laughs> Am I what? No, I'm all about the poo tank. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll prove it to you, love. I'm kidding, because actually, I'm going to fuck her in the arse just to kind of... Oh, she'll go, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. You know, my favourite thing about Northern Ireland is, like, the history of Northern Ireland, not that I, I know fuck all about it, but the, the fact that we called it, that we called it, in England, in London, the Troubles. <laughs> we might as well have called it the Spot of Bother. <laughs> what, 20 years civil war? Spot of Bother. <laughs> yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble. I don't want to go on about it. <laughs> we should call the Iraq war the to-do. <laughs> 
You haven't explained to him what the troubles are. <laughs> they don't really report it on CBBS, do they? <laughs> it's a real gap since John Craven left. You haven't watched News Round. You're fucked. <laughs> I noticed with all the boys down the front have highlighted their hair. <laughs> That's excellent. That's excellent. It's nice because sometimes it's difficult. Some people don't have very strong gaydar. <laughs> Nice to give him a heads up. <laughs> None of that down there. <laughs> Sorry, for all I know, you, you're the Arctic Monkeys. Hello. <laughs> Want to be rude? Um, excellent. I'm sure it's a fashion thing from from the mid '80s. <laughs> Maybe you're Def Leppard. Um, <laughs> Has anyone got any questions? If anyone wants to chip in. What hair product do I use? <laughs> what, you want to try and avoid that hair product? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Spunk. <laughs> I think so. If you're labouring under the illusion that spunk is a hair product, <laughs> it sounds like you may have been abused as a teenager. <laughs> Were you on scout camp? And the scoutmaster said, you'll need something for your quiff. <laughs> I'm going to take a photo. I don't get to play here every day, I thought I might, a little reminder. Has anyone got any questions? It might be a good time for that. Will you marry me? Will I marry you? <laughs> uh, I'm not the captain of a ship, but certainly if you have a partner, I will... I'll... <laughs> I pronounce you man and wife. And I'm a patri... Wh wh sorry, who said will you marry me? I'd fuck you. Any <laughs> good for you? I think a marriage is a hell of a commitment, isn't it? Also, the fella that you're with doesn't look at all happy. <laughs> have you? How long have you guys been, been together? Two years. Two years. And you're willing to throw it all away? <laughs> what? Sorry. Only for, you. Only for me. Well, you say that. <laughs> And what, what do you do for a living, sir? I'm a sales assistant. You're a sales assistant. Whereabouts? Go on, what kind of thing? Yeah, I sell computer games. You sell computer games? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, tell you what ladies love. Knowledge of computer games. <laughs> Although, you are probably quite good with your thumbs, aren't you? <laughs> you could probably get her off in seconds. <laughs> Hang on, there's a cheat on this. Would I fuck... You'd fuck my dad to save your mum. If we could hook up that deal, I'm more than happy with that arrangement. Fill your boots, sir. What, sorry? I love the boots. You love the boots? That's a very odd reaction to that phrase. Fill your boots. I love the boots. You sound like some kind of sassy cat from a cartoon. I love the boots. <laughs> the new school voice. <laughs> what do you do for a living, sir? Uh, I work at co-op. <laughs> <laughs> I like the co-op. Don't knock the co-op. Because the co-op do everything from like, yeah, I just need a pint of milk. And also, could you bury Nana? <laughs> That's a mental shop, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pint of milk, Benson Hedges, very nut, cremated, yeah, lovely. <laughs> Wicked. What do you do then? Uh, I do the food. Please say you bury Nana. No. <laughs> what do you do? I work at the food, I do the. I work at the food. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I can see why your greengrocer business isn't being targeted. <laughs> Big supermarket's not really on it around here, are they? <laughs> so what do you do for this uh, supermarket? I do the food. <laughs> I, do, I do the food. I make you go young. <laughs> yeah, she. I love the boots. <laughs> I love the boots. I come with a job. I do the food. 
I've created a whole comic persona for you, but... Because <laughs> some people have that weird sexual thing about wanting to, um, they've got like a, a, a glass coffee table and they sit under it and someone defecates on the table and they think, oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> a glass coffee table? <laughs> What is it? The 70s? For fuck's sake. <laughs> I get reviewed quite a lot now. That's a weird thing. It started happening. Like journalists coming to the show. I don't know if there's any in this evening. Are there any journalists in? Yeah. Are you a journalist? Yeah. Who, with who? BBC. UBC. EBC. EBC. <laughs> is it BBC? Yeah. What? <laughs> what, are you undercover or something? I've... Go on. Who are you a journalist with? BBC. The BBC? And what, are you covering this? No. How little is happening in this town? <laughs> news, news, news. I'll tell you what I noticed is happening in this town. I got that, you know that little What's On guide for Belfast? Have you seen that? It might just be for fucking tourists like me, but I had it in the hotel. <laughs> Flicking through it, couldn't believe my life. The big front page story, there's an exhibition, the design and build of the Titanic. Strikes me when this town starts taking pride in that. <laughs> things are at a bit of a low point, aren't they? <laughs> yes, of course, we designed to build the Titanic. Didn't that famously sink? <laughs> it's... Build the iceberg, what? what, you didn't build the iceberg? <laughs> uh. Yes, how were you to know? How were you to know there'd be a bit of ice out there in the fucking ocean? <laughs> it just strikes me that it's a brilliant exhibition about the design and build of the Titanic. It doesn't mention the fact it sinks at any point and just at the end of it goes, it was fine when we last saw it. <laughs> Whereabouts of the ship unknown. <laughs> Adorable. Hello, what do you do for a living, sir? I repossess houses. You repossess houses? Ooh. What, sorry? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, maybe if you paid your fucking bills. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You didn't, didn't want to. I, I don't really understand those financial... I mean, repossessing houses sounds a bit horrible as a job. I didn't know that when Northern Rock went under, I didn't understand that at all. Uh, how are they in trouble and Ocean Finance are fine? <laughs> We've all seen the people they lend money to on the ads. They lend money to people like Reese. <laughs> I love the way Reese is, it's indiscriminate. He just likes having his name mentioned. It doesn't matter if it's a negative connotation. I'll tell you what, Reese has murdered people. Yay. <laughs> he mentioned me. You're adorable. Um, any, any other questions? You're a legend, mate. You're a legend. I'm a legend. I'm, I'm not a great legend, though, am I? I'm not, I'm not like King Arthur. I don't think, I don't think in, in, you know, 5,000 years' time, people will be sitting around campfires. All right, I'm halfway through a fucking bit now. I'm just saying, I don't think in generations to come, people will be sitting around going, and there was a fat-faced man. And lo, did he know a lot of fucking one-liners. <laughs> Just doesn't seem as kind of... But thanks very much. Can you shake my hand? I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> and they say music hall's dead. <laughs> I'm quite dyslexic. I, I, any other dyslexic sentences dyslexic? <laughs> well, from that reaction, I'm guessing proper old-fashioned stupid. Uh, <laughs> Fucking spell! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Seems, sorry, were you trying to say something else when we just came out all O's? <laughs> A little noggin. What? Can't spell, don't care. Can't spell, don't care. D O N T C A R E. <laughs> Have you got a t shirt on? <laughs> what? what does it say, sorry? Jimmy Four? <laughs> My God, you're aiming low in life, aren't you? 
And what does it say on the back? Will you marry me? Well, that's going to put me off when I'm fucking you, isn't it? <laughs> I think I might lose my erection. I'll be going, oh, she wants a long-term commitment. <laughs> oh, I hate reading, it's boring. <laughs> it's the kind of gig where I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be surprised if, by the end of this gig, I was in a wicker man. <laughs> in the town square going, Christ, no, Christ, Christ, no. Yeah, yeah, them over there going, oh, I wish we thought of that. <laughs> now, do you ever get any racist graffiti in, in uh, Belfast? <coughs> do you ever get any horrible... <laughs> well, I know you have your murals. <laughs> but I don't count those. If someone's gone to the trouble of drawing a lovely picture. <laughs> I always think that's a shame when they pose for those pictures. Go, take your balaclava off. Come on. <laughs> Is there a generation of artists in, in Northern Ireland going, I can't really do faces? <laughs> yeah. And now they're kind of a little bit out of work, going, yeah, could you wear a roll neck <laughs> and a cap <laughs> and then pull that down and that up? can do eyes. <laughs> Quite sinister eyes. <laughs> do you want to get back to me if you get a penny of a JJ? <laughs> That's right, I said for JJ, what of it? <laughs> well, why, why is the JJ funny? <laughs> That's what he calls yours. <laughs> After he heard me say it on telly, he now calls your lady place a for JJ. <laughs> I could not be more flattered. <laughs> I, I, literally, I couldn't be more. <laughs> what a beautiful double bum you have there, sir. <laughs> How much I give every year to animal charities? Have a guess. <laughs> what? Sorry. Million <laughs> pounds. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen. Uh, with, a, with a lovely wave as well. Good on you. Uh, have you ever heard of an amount of money less than a million pounds? <laughs> That voice suggests that million pounds. <laughs> cool, you're posh. <laughs> well, I would rather not say. How's about you tell me the girth of your vagina? <laughs> And we will ascertain whether it be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway. <laughs> what, sorry? A KFC bucket. A KFC bucket. <laughs> Possibly a KFC bucket, sir, if that, if that helps your process. <laughs> How long am I in Brighton for? Um, uh, for tax purposes, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I think until tomorrow night, but who knows? 
Where am I saying something? Yours, baby. I'm joking, of course. I'm going to use that lady's enormous vagina as a sleeping bag. I'm joking, of course. I'm going to fuck it like everyone else. I'm necessarily harsh. I'm sorry. That's a perfectly reasonable question of yours. What happened to your face? What happened to my face? <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. I've just got a big face. There's no getting around it. Well, you could, you could go around it. It'd be quicker to go through. Um, it takes a certain confidence from someone with Lamal's haircut. <laughs> I like the way you've highlighted your hair, Sam, because you've clearly thought, there's too much hair to revise. I'll just highlight the important bits. <laughs> well, God love you. You. There's nothing really the matter with it other than it's a funny shape. <laughs> it's come in handy in this job. <laughs> oh, also, your mum says hi. <laughs> it is, it's a contractual obligation if someone heckles in an aggressive way that I have to say that. Where, where is she? Oh, hi there, how are you? <laughs> I, did, I didn't, didn't recognise you because you're sort of sitting down, you're not. <laughs> you're not doing that. I, just didn't, I didn't recognise you, you can understand. I'm sorry, did you think I was a friend of yours from school <laughs> and that your mum being here, I go, I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, I fucked her. Loads. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> sorry, Dad. <laughs> sorry, not your real dad, but... <laughs> whoever she's brought home this week. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to end by talking about heckling. I like heckling. I like it when people join in, even if it's a criticism of the shape of my face. <laughs> I'm not angry at you. Maybe if you brought him up a little bit better. <laughs> yeah? Spare the rod, spoil the child. She swallowed. She, she swallowed, she didn't spare. <laughs> oh, the level of discomfort on his face now. Is, that's fucking genius. Well done, you. Yeah. Yes, that's your own father going, yeah, I like my son. I could have got sucked off. He's got silly hair, I sort of wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone such a brilliant colour. <laughs> He's got literally the brightest red I've ever seen. Just, just hold your face up a second, it looks really funny, weirdly. <laughs> Isn't that a weird, a weird irony? <laughs> Sorry, mate, it's just your dad was just been talking about getting sucked off by your mum. <laughs> that doesn't look so weird now, does it? I like heckling. That was a fucking marvellous heckle there, sir. Thank you so much. It genuinely made me cry a little bit. <laughs> I've done a little tear. He's the hairy-handed gent Who ran a muck in Kent Lately he's been overheard in Mayfair You better stay away from him He'll rip your lungs out, Jim I'd like to meet his tailor with the queen doing the werewolves of London I saw Long Cheney Jr. walking with the queen doing the werewolves of London I saw a werewolf drinking a pina colada at Trader Vic's his hair was perfect Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and that was, that was an old clip of me. That happened in the past uh, when I was funny. I'm still funny now. Come and see me live on tour. Join in. IRL. Yeah, kids. <laughs>